In this video, we're going to discuss the equality of complex numbers. So two complex numbers, here I have a plus bi and c plus di, are equal if and only if a is equal to c, so the real parts equal each other, and as long as b is equal to d. So it has to meet both those criteria. The real parts must be the same, and the coefficients of the complex parts must be the same as well. So first we're going to look at, are we equal? Here we're given 5 plus 6i, and then we have 6 plus 5i. Are those two numbers equal? No, they are not, because in order for them to be equal, 5 would have to be equal to 6, which it's not, and 6 would have to be equal to 5, which it's not. So are these numbers equal? No, they are not. In letter B, we have 8 minus 3i minus 2. Wait, that number's not quite in com standard complex form yet. So let's fix it and rewrite it so that it is. Um, let's see, we have 8 and negative 2, so it would be 6 minus 3i. And then here we have 6 plus 10i minus 13i. So these are like terms. I have 10i take away 13i, that would leave me with minus 3i, so it would be 6 minus 3i. So the question is, are those two complex numbers equal? The real parts are both 6. The complex coefficient is negative 3 and negative 3. So yes, these two numbers are equal. In the next portion, we're going to find the real numbers a and b so that the equations are true. So we're going to force these two numbers to be the same, to be equal complex numbers. That means that the real part here has to match the real part here, which means a must be negative 2. And the coefficient of our complex part must equal the coefficient of our complex part, so b must equal 3. So if a is equal to negative 2, that would leave me with negative 2 plus, and then b is 3, 3i. Does that match what we have here? Yes, it does. So the answer would be right here. a is equal to negative 2, and b is equal to 3. Our second example is a little more involved here. So again, in order for two complex numbers to be equal, the real parts must match, and the complex parts, parts must match. Our real part here is a minus 4. So a minus 4 must equal 3. Now we need to figure out the value of a, so we're going to get a by itself by adding 4 to both sides. We would get a is equal to 7. Okay, so we know a is 7. Now what's the value of b? Well, the coefficient of the complex part here is b plus 5, so b plus 5 must equal the coefficient of the complex part over here, which is 2b. This time we need to get the b's on one side and we need to move the, co uh, the 5 or do something. Because this is all by itself, I'm going to take away b from both sides. Then I get 5 is equal to b. Oh, okay. So then five, uh, b has to be 5. Let's just double check this. Let's plug in 7 and 5 and make sure that we do end up with two numbers that truly are equal. So if I plug in 7 here, that would give me 7 minus, uh, sorry, I'm thinking the answer, 7 minus 4, which is 3, then plus b is 5, so it would be 5 plus 5i, that would be plus 10i. Over here, so does this equal, let's put a question mark, there is no a to plug into, so we're just going to say 3. So the real parts so far look good. How about the imaginary parts? We're plugging in 5 for b, that would be 2 times 5, which would be 10. So we get 10i, so we get 3, the real parts match, and the imaginary parts match, so let's review the answer, was a equals 7, and b is equal to 5. 